Okay, so let's make a, a jump ahead now and pull together some of the things we've learned um, and have make a script that does something marginally more interesting than the things that we've been doing before. So let's make a new script and let's call it Monte Carlo Pi. And let's write some comments at the top as usual. So this is a script to calculate the value of pi using a Monte Carlo method. Now, anytime you see Monte Carlo, that means that you talk, you're going to be talking about random numbers. Okay? If you're in my lecture this week, you'll have seen um, me explain before I started um, coding how this works, but I'll try and write it now in a way that explains wha how it works as we go along. Okay, so when you see Monte Carlo, you're talking about random numbers. And the MATLAB function RAND returns a random number between 0 and 1. So if I make two variables, x equals RAND and y equals RAND, that will give me a random point between x equals 0 and x equals 1, and y equals 0 and y equals 1, if I interpret it in that way. And I could indeed plot that on a, a graph. If you look up the documentation for the plot command, you'll find out that you can tell MATLAB how you want something plotting by whatever you put in this string. So this says plot this random point xy using a red dot. So if I run this script right now and look at the window. Okay, so it picked a random point and then plotted it with a red dot. Okay, so what I'm going to have it do now is I'm going to use a for loop to have it plot a hundred random points between x equals zero, x equals one, and y equals zero, y equals one. So I'll use my I'll call my running variable n and from one to a hundred that means it'll do whatever comes next a hundred times. So it picks a random point and then it plots it and it'll do that a hundred times. Um, the way MATLAB plot works, every time it plots it will clear the window unless you turn on something called hold. So if you put hold on here, um, then it will overplot each random point, that's what we want. And when we exit the program we want to turn hold back off again. So let's run that now. And what I should get now is a hundred random points. So let's make sure it's done. Okay, there we go. It looks good. Looks like um, the graph's got measles. So there's a hundred of these red dots. They're all between zero and one on X, and they're all between zero and one on Y. Okay, so by now you're probably wondering, what on earth does this have to do with pi? Okay, well, if um. If my random point, if the distance of my random point from the origin is less than or equal to 1, then that will describe a quarter of a unit circle, won't it? Um, so what I could do is I could test with an if condition, if the square root of x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1, then I could plot that with a different colour, I could plot that in with a green dot, and else do what I had before, plot it with a red dot. Okay, so what will happen now is if the distance of the random point from the origin is less than or equal to 1, it will plot the point with a green dot, otherwise it will plot it with a red dot. Right, so that should give me some green dots now. Okay. So, it's done what I asked it, but you still maybe are not convinced that this describes a quarter of a circle. So let's whack up this number. Computers are great like this. We can tell it instead of doing it a hundred times, do it ten thousand times. And because computers are quick, that won't take very long. <laughs> 
Okay. Now, maybe you're more convinced now that the green thing is a quarter of a circle. And the area of quarter of a unit circle is pi by 4. Because the area of a unit circle is pi. So if I knew how many of how many green dots I had and I knew the total number of dots then the ratio should be pi by 4. Well I can easily count that. I can have um, a variable called inside which I set to 0 and then in here where you know it's inside the circle add 1 to this variable inside equals inside plus 1 and the total number of dots is this so instead of writing it there let's use a variable n max let's say it's a thousand to start with and let's put that here so that will loop a thousand times for n equals 1 to n max and every time the random point lies inside the unit circle inside goes up by 1 Okay, so the only thing that's stopping this script now from giving us the value of pi that it's calculated is that I haven't actually calculated it. So I know that the ratio of the green points to the red points is going to be pi by 4. So if I multiply that ratio by 4, I should get a value for pi. And let's print it out nicely as a floating point number. Pi pi. Okay, so now for a thousand iterations, this should tell me a value of pi. 3.18. And that's the resulting plot. And of course the beauty of this is that you can you can increase the number of iterations. So you could tell it, okay, do 3,000 points instead of 1,000 points. And in principle, that should get a better value. So we'll see. Okay, so it's closer. Uh, right, before I go any further, I'm going to put some comments on this program because I'll never remember setup variables. Inside counts the number of green points inside the unit circle. N max is the total number of iterations. Now this is where the main loop is. X Y is a randomly generated point between X between not less than X less than one. the same boundaries for y. Okay, so test if this point is inside the unit circle. It is, so plot it in green and increment inside or increment the inside counter else it isn't so plot it in red I promise you if you comment your codes like this when you come back to them years later you'll know what they do calculate a final value of pi and display it. Okay, so perhaps I want to run this for 10,000 iterations, but I don't want to wait all that time, however long that is, for the computer to get to the end. I want it to tell me what the intermediate values are. So I can do that. I can print out a value for pi every thousandth iteration if I do this, so if mod n um, 
comma thousand if the remainder when you divide n by a thousand equals zero I'll calculate a value here so this is the same formula as below except now it's n not n max and then I'll print it out in the same way as I have done at the end and don't forget to finish off okay so now I'll comment this bit output every one thousandth iteration so now I can watch this and in principle as I said it doesn't always work because this method is based on random numbers but in principle you should be able to see the value of pi get closer to what you know it actually to be so this is printing out the value every thousandth iteration and it'll go up to ten thousand okay so see there it didn't get closer because it's based on random numbers and because it's based on random numbers if you run it again you won't get the same result so this is one of the one of the weaknesses of these methods but it's interesting isn't it and after this one's finished we'll look at the figure and you should see a nice um, quarter circle Not bad.